Um, it's telling me I have a low connection. I was going to check it out for you guys right quick. According to this, I don't. Anyway, y'all let me know if you can't see me. Um, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And it is Monday night. I try to get on here on Monday nights. Um, I should all the time, but you know how that goes. I was really tired today because we went shopping this morning. Y'all, I literally just cleaned my kitchen for the day. Just now. I got up this morning. I felt like I had been run over by a truck because I cooked so much over the weekend. And um, I was so tired. And that's how that's how fibromyalgia and stuff like that does you. Like, you can go, 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 and then and then you feel like crap, you know. So I got up this morning and I said, oh, I'm going to lay here and I'm going to rest all day and I'm not going to do anything. So I didn't clean up my kitchen. And um, then I got the bright idea that we need to go pick up an order that we placed at Belk's because they let us have the sale price for Veterans Day if we come back to get it when we went shopping the other day. So I told Chris, he went in and picked it up for me, but I got new shoes, and so they're really hurting my feet. i got to get used to them. And the other tennis shoes, but it's still it's still a transition. And so uh, I went into Old Navy today, and I showed y'all on here me trying on the clothes, and then I'm going to post how it looked in the store. I, I edited it this afternoon, and uh, so I just have finished resting and went into my kitchen and um, cleaned up the kitchen. I thought maybe somebody else would do it, but they never did. Hey, Becky. Hey, Christy. Hey, everybody. So I'm having my nighttime coffee. I have coffee every evening, and Chris does too. And I've already read over our chapters that we're going to review tonight. And it's Exodus chapters 2 through 4. One part of it kind of confused me a little bit. So I had to read a little commentary. I read, um, let's see, I read Matthew Henry's commentary. And then I read a commentary by a lady. And so I will uh, talk to y'all about that. Because I was like, what in the world is going on here? So it's in chapter 4 of Exodus, um, after God tells Moses what to do, and then he, he starts traveling with his wife, and then God gets uh, some angry, he wants to kill him. I didn't remember that, I don't know if y'all remember that or not, but um, I'll read it to you in a minute. I'm going to drink just a couple of sips of coffee first. Anyway, my feet's hurt today, and my back's hurt today. But I'm still smiling. Because I'm here. Right? Woo! My house is a mess. I need to, um... I want to decorate for Christmas so bad I can't stand it. But I can't. Because it's not even Thanksgiving yet. And I normally decorate the week that the girls are off for Thanksgiving for Christmas. So I'll have to wait until May gets home from college. She registered for classes today and said that she couldn't get Spanish. My nephew flew out on an airplane today to go to Orlando. He's going to school in Orlando. Um, and he's got to take a placement test and register for his classes. And we figured out, because he has a big truck that drinks a lot of gas, that it was actually cheaper for him to fly from Atlanta down there than it was for him to drive. So um, he's staying with friends that he's going to be going to school with. So we were like, we'll just put you on an airplane. Aeroplane. I said, that's the good thing about you being on, in Orlando and us being near Atlanta is it's so cheap to fly back and forth uh, from Atlanta to Orlando. So um, that that's perfect because his truck would have spent more money in gasoline than what we put him on an airplane for a round trip. All right. Let's talk about God for a minute. How about it? Because if it wasn't for Him, we would have a very empty life, wouldn't we? He's the one that comes and makes our life more abundant. And I'm thankful for it. 
uh, I probably wouldn't be smiling if it wasn't for him. I probably wouldn't have such a good marriage if it wasn't for him. The fact that me and Chris know who God is and have his love in our heart helps us have a better marriage. Does it mean that you're perfect when you're a Christian? No, but it sure does make you love different. Because God's love is way bigger than our love, right? And it's that love that lives inside of us through the Holy Spirit that helps us with our relationships. So, um, we're going to talk about Moses. We have entered into the Exodus, okay? An Exodus really is a picture, can be, of a Christian. Um, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but many of you probably have. But um, when the people um, left out of Egypt, Moses led them out of Egypt, and they went on their journey to the promised land, and they, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. A lot of Christians are, are saved, but they never get out of the wilderness, just like the people that came out of Egypt, because they never dip into the Word of God and form a relationship that's close enough with the Lord so that they become witnesses and um, so that they can have the abundant life that Jesus actually came and died for, for the church, okay? And so what happens is they get saved and they, they um, I'm not saying they're terrible people, I'm just saying that they never dip into the abundant life. Um, and that is the story of Exodus. And that is the story of many Christians today. Okay? And I was once there for a long time in that wilderness. Okay? I was saved, but I was in the wilderness. So, um, I will talk about that another day. But that's a good lesson to learn. That these people, even if they were following God, got aggravated, didn't they? So, we're going to talk about um, Moses. And how God comes to Moses today. How Moses is born today. Okay. So the Pharaoh was mad and angry. Because the Hebrew people were taking. Were being so blessed. That he felt like they were going to. Take over his land and his people. So he said to the. He made a law. That said that every Hebrew child. That was born a male. Um, had to be killed. So what happened was Moses' mother was a Hebrew woman. And she did not want him to die. And I'm sure God had something to do with that. Um, but she decided that she would make a basket out of bitumen. Do you know that bitumen is spelled B-I-T-U-M-E-N? And when I was an architect... The best roof that you could put on a commercial building was a modified bitumen roof. And that's what she uses to make his basket with. I'll read it to you. Just give me a second when I find it because I don't have it highlighted. She took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch. But if you look up the word pitch, it's bitumen. And put the child therein and laid it in the flags by the river brink. Okay? So when Pharaoh's daughter went out there to the river to bathe, she had all of her little ladies that, you know, hung out with her and took care of her. She happened to see the basket. And she said, bring me that basket. So they fetched it for her. She opened it up and lo and behold, there was a little baby. And she said, this must be one of the Hebrew babies. And she didn't want him to be killed by her father. So, Moses' mother sent her daughter to keep watch. So, Moses' sister asks the Pharaoh's daughter, Hey, yes, it is. Would you like for me to fetch his mother? So that she can breastfeed him. She didn't say breastfeed, but you know what I mean. 
The Pharaoh's daughter said yes. She sent Moses home with his real mother and told her to raise him and bring him back to her when he got of age, when he was weaned. So she brought Moses back to the Pharaoh's daughter when he was weaned, and Moses was raised in the Pharaoh's home. Isn't that wild how uh, we just learned about the coat of many colors in Jacob, and he was the right-hand man in the home of Pharaoh because his brothers sold him. Now we have Moses, who's a Hebrew, that is in the home of the Pharaoh again. Completely different family, but a Hebrew family raised in the he in the Pharaoh's castle. I guess it probably was called. So, but Moses sees somebody mistreating one of his one of the Hebrew people. He kills him and he hides him in the sand. People find out about it because they see him. And the Pharaoh wants him dead. So Moses flees. Okay, when he flees, he flees. And God comes to him and tells him that he's going to use him to free the people of Egypt. That, to free his people in Egypt. And um, he's married. And he has two children. And... Um, he is reluctant and worried and tells God that he is not a man of speech. And I love what God said to him when he said that. This goes to show that God knows, he knows us. He knows us when we're born. He knows us. He knows if we're sick. He knows if we're well. He knows everything about us. And Moses says to God, um, I'm, I'm skipping ahead, but I like this part. And Moses says unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent or a man of words, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and have a heavy and awkward tongue. And the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? So it was like God said, are you kidding me? I made you. I know that you're not eloquent of speech. I'm asking you to do this. And um, I like that because it reminded me that God knows everything about us. He knows if we're having a good day. He knows if we're having a bad day. He knows if we have a disease. You know, if we're not well. He knows that. And he even says in this book, he makes us. So he makes us that way. So when things happen to us, we have to understand and keep smiling. No matter what. Because God is in control. And God is the maker Okay, and he made you, and he made me, and he made all of us. He made Moses. He made Moses, and he had Moses put in a basket and saved. And now he's got a job for him. Um, now, there's a lot more to this story. Um, and, of course, I'm skipping through parts of it. But I'm, I'm just talking to you about what touched my heart the most. Okay? Another thing that caught my eye is that in chapter 4, um, of course God tells Moses that he is going to perform miracles. He shows Moses that he'll be able to throw his um, rod down and it becomes a snake. He tells Moses that he will be able to turn water into blood. Okay, He's going to um, let Moses be able to do these miracles so that Pharaoh knows who God is. He tells Moses to tell them that he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Okay? And he wants these people to know who he is, and he's going to give Moses power. 
Now, with that said, he tells Moses to go. And on his journey, Moses, on his re return to um on his return to Egypt he also tells him that he's going to harden Pharaoh's heart and even if he shows him all of this stuff Pharaoh's still not going to let him go and then he's going to take this is what he says and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh thus saith the Lord Israel is my son even my firstborn and I say unto thee let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And, um, but, this is what caught my eye. In chapter uh, 4, in verse 24, it says, Then it came to pass by the way in the end, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Now, God was just telling him that he was going to use him. He was telling him what he was going to do. He was very, you know, seemed to be fine with Moses, and Moses was fine, except that he was reluctant. Now God wants to kill him. I mean, within like two verses, God wants to kill him. And I thought, well, for heaven's sakes, I don't remember that part, okay? And it says, the, then Zephora, which is Moses' wife, took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. Okay. So I read about it. And what is happening here is that Zephora was not, she was, they were unequally yoked. She was not someone who grew up worshiping God the Father our father, God, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. And Moses, one of the covenants were, were, were that they were supposed to circumcise their children. And he had not circumcised his son. So what has happened is after God gives Moses this warning about Pharaoh's firstborn, Moses starts to get worried about the fact that he has not been obedient and he has not had his firstborn circumcised. And apparently, Zephora, as the woman in the relationship, she was a strong woman, had the upper hand. And she wasn't going to let Moses circumcise their son. And God was ready to kill him. I'm serious, y'all. Everybody thinks that God is love, and he is. But God is just, and God is right. And you have to. If you're going to serve him, he is not going to have you halfway doing something and be happy with it. If you want to be blessed by God, you have got to follow him as much as you possibly can. Now, if you do something unintentionally, he knows that. He knows your heart. But he knew that Moses was contemplating the fact that he had not had his son circumcised and he knew that Moses was not having the upper hand and having his son circumcised, so he was ready to kill Moses. Well, Zephora figures this out. Instead of letting him kill her husband, she takes a stone and circumcises her son herself. But she don't have a good attitude about it. And she says to Moses... A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. And the Lord said, uh, then, and then Moses goes on and meets Aaron. But from what I read in somebody else's passage, whether or not this is true, I imagine it probably was because it doesn't say another word about his wife anywhere. He sent her back home to her daddy. And his kids, so that he could keep his mind on his work for God. Okay? Um, and that's a high price to pay, but Moses had a huge job. He, he had a lot to do. Okay? So, um, we need to remember when we're trying to serve God, or if we're married to somebody that serves God, 
um, that we um, try to stay in the Lord's will, and the Lord's will is always that we live for God. Now, does that mean you're supposed to neglect your family? No. No, 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 no. It's God first, family second, church third. Church does not come before family. But <clears throat> somebody like Moses that God had actually appeared to personally and told him what he was going to use him for, he didn't have enough. He had to stay focused, okay, so that he could get those people out of Egypt. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I thought both of those things were really big. I liked it when God said that, that he knew who Moses was. He knew how he spoke. But he did tell Moses that he could use Aaron, his brother, who was eloquently, a, a, who could speak well. And they go in it as a team. He does uh, give Aaron a good heart about it. And it says right here, And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all of the words which the Lord had spoken into Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. So, um, those are two just really important things for us to learn out of those few chapters. And we're, we've only just begun. He hasn't even gotten to the Pharaoh yet, right? I just got cold chills. I don't know why, but I guess God liked that. Um, anyway, I hope that y'all are reading, and I know I'm going about it slow, so y'all should have plenty of time to keep up with me, <laughs> because sometimes I feel good, and sometimes I don't, by the time the night comes. Um, I hope to see y'all tomorrow. As far as I know, we don't have anything big going on. Now, Chris is going to want me to go fishing with him one day this week, and of course, the day I go fishing, I'll be exhausted. Um, but other than that, hopefully I'll be able to come in and talk to y'all at night some. Um, we're going to say our prayers. I hope that y'all got something out of this word tonight. I hope that you'll go in and read the story so that you will see why those two areas did kind of um, highlight in my mind what, what I wanted to talk with y'all about. And um, we will talk tomorrow about um, chapters, let's do five, six, and seven. Yeah, five, six, and seven tomorrow. And I bet we get to hear something about Pharaoh. What do you think? Um, so let's say our prayers. I know there's a lot of people out there that needs prayer. If y'all want prayer, type it in there. There's many of y'all that are friends now. There's many of y'all that read each other's posts. When we're doing Bible study, if you have a need or a request, always um, type them in, even if they're unspoken. And we'll be sure and pray for each other, okay? Now, I am one that'll tell you my prayer is not going to get to heaven any quicker than yours will. God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't have favorites. Uh, so, let your requests be known to God, okay? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you for being that God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God who loved his people enough that when they he heard their cry, he prepared a man like Moses to go and free the people out of Egypt. We thank you for um, being in the age of grace in the New Testament where we have a different type of salvation than Moses and Abraham did. Um, we are blessed by the fact that Christ has come and died for our sin, and we thank you for that. Um, may we keep our eyes and ears open as we go through your word and learn um, your will in our life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed night. Um, Brenda says her daughter has an endometrial cancer and she starts chemo and she's 45 years old. I am so sorry. 
Brenda, and we will definitely keep her in our prayers. We have a young lady named Jessica um, in our church. Well, it's her mother and daddy is in our church. She's 40. No, no, no. She's 34. This is her second time having cancer. And um, it looks pretty bad. She's got two little bitty children. I don't even think they're in elementary school yet or preschool. One may be in preschool. Um, so keep her in your prayers as well. Her name is Jessica. So she's going through a lot right now. And her husband is going through a lot knowing that he may not have his wife to help him. And um, I got to talk to her this Sunday, and it was really nice. Um, and God is in control. If he takes her home, he'll make sure. I told her we just have to have faith, and that's the way I was when I had cancer. We just have to have faith that he knows what's best for us, not us. Even if we want something, doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing. So we have to have trust, and I'll be praying for your daughter, and um, we will... I'll be praying for her. Anybody else that has a prayer request, list them, and we will be praying for each other. I love each and every one of y'all. I look forward to seeing and talking to y'all every day. The minute that Chris left the house today and the minute that Amy left the house today, uh, the first thing I did is got out those Christmas presents and started trying them on for you guys because I just enjoy sharing my life with y'all. And even if y'all are not here with me, it's like you're with me because we're just... I mean, we're, we're people, and we're real, and we love God, and we can um, encourage one another. Y'all have a good night. Um, Becky says that her husband's waiting on the liver to please lift him up in prayer. We sure will, Becky. Um, somebody was telling me that if you live in, I don't know if this is true, but they were telling me that in Florida, um, I believe it's Florida or California, that if you need a liver, it's easier because... Um, I shouldn't say this, but uh, they said it was true that a lot of people do die. Um, and they have like drug overdoses and a lot of people that are dying and stuff. And that you your chances are, are greater in areas like that to get um, a liver. Because she actually, it was a girl that um, was our neighbor down in Pensacola. And she actually had a, a brother that had just gotten a liver. And she said that it made a huge difference on the area that you lived in, whether or not um, they're available to you. So we will definitely pray God knows whether or not he will get a liver. He knows what's in store for him. And we will definitely keep him in our prayers and be praying for that, Becky. Y'all have a good night. And thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God. And we're not ashamed to say it, right? Bye. Love ya.